Let's continue talking about stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination, but let's focus on stigmatization and stereotype threat. What does it mean to be stigmatized? People who are stigmatized are persistently stereotyped, devalued by our society, and in general seen as deviant due to their membership in some particular group. So there are many groups that feel stigmatized. For example, African Americans are often stigmatized. Women are often stigmatized. Think about various religions, particularly religions that have relatively small numbers of people in our country. Jews, I'm sure, feel stigmatized. Muslims feel stigmatized. Little people as a group probably feel stigmatized. There are many groups of people who feel stigmatized. And, I mean, think about it. Nobody wants to be seen as a category. That's what this is all about. Stigmatized people often assume that other people see them as a category, and as such, people see them through some skewed, stereotypic lens. So, for example, women might be thinking and kind of worrying that other people are seeing them as being overly emotional or maybe less intelligent. And nobody wants to confirm another person's stereotype. So that leads to a lot of pressure. Now, of course, if you're feeling a lot of pressure not to confirm other people's stereotypes, to some extent you feel less control over your life. I mean, because think about it. How much can you really control how someone else is going to perceive you before they even meet you? That can lead people to become somewhat defensive. Let me give you a couple examples of that. What could happen is that people might deflect negativity, which is going to seem like in a minute when I give you an example that it could be good, but that's usually coupled with people also deflecting positivity, which is not such a good thing. Let me give you an example so you see what I'm talking about. Research has shown that when black subjects in a research study receive evaluations that are negative from white subjects in a research study, they often deflect that negativity if they believe it might stem from some form of racism. And that makes sense because they're thinking, the negative evaluation that you give me doesn't say something about me, it says something about you. You hate black people. So you can see how in that situation, it could be easy to deflect the negativity if I feel that I'm being stigmatized. But the flip side works out as well. Again, in research studies, when black subjects receive some type of an evaluation from a white research subject, and if that evaluation is positive, black subjects might deflect that positivity. They might not accept that and internalize that if they believe that the white person has some type of desire to not appear racist. Because they might believe then that that evaluation that the white subject gave was not really genuine. It wasn't really positive. It was just in an attempt to appear not racist. So you see, being a stigmatized person of a group really messes with your head. And to some extent, it'll really change how you see yourself and how you see other people. Well, there are some other things that go along with this as well. When you perceive discrimination, that predicts a lot of negative health consequences, both mental and physical. So for example, people who perceive discrimination often have higher blood pressure, they're more likely to have depression, they're more likely to engage in substance abuse, more likely to have a stroke, lots of negative things. Stigmatization can also lead to stereotype threat. As we just mentioned, stigmatized people can experience some profound negative effects, whether they're health-related, um, physically, or mentally. And really the bottom line is it's because they're worrying a lot about confirming other people's stereotypes. So for example, the woman in this picture might be worried about confirming a variety of stereotypes that are consistent with women. So she might be in a situation where she wants to stand up for herself, but she's worried now that people are going to see her as a bitch. Or she might be in a situation where she wants to express how she really feels, but she's afraid people are going to see her as being overly emotional. So that's my point. Well, that leads to some, some problems. So for example, stereotype threat, this worry about confirming other people's stereotypes, can affect intellectual performance, and that's been found in the lab. This is an interesting research study where black and white research subjects were brought into the lab and they were given uh, a task that they needed to solve. And it was really a, a pretty difficult verbal test. Now, sometimes the people involved in this test 
were told that the, the tasks that they were engaging in really had nothing to do with intelligence. Although it was difficult, it was not diagnostic of your overall intelligence. And in those situations, the white subjects and the black subjects performed about equally. However, when the people were told that it was indeed a test of intelligence, black subjects performed statistically significantly worse. And this is usually interpreted as being good evidence of stereotype threat because one stereotype associated with African Americans is they're not as intelligent as white Americans. And the idea is in this situation, the black subjects were worried about confirming that stereotype and that affected their performance. Well, how does that work? How is it that stereotype threat can actually influence someone's performance on some type of test? Well, think about it this way. If you're worried about confirming someone's stereotypes, that you're not as smart as members of another group, that's going to increase your anxiety level. And not only is it going to increase your anxiety level, you're going to have to deal with a lot of distracting thoughts about avoiding failure. Now, of course, if you've got that going on in your mind, you're kind of losing your focus. And if you're losing your focus and you're spending your mental energy on other things, worry, you also have a loss of cognitive resources. You only have so much mental energy that you can spare. And if you're worrying about things and you're anxious about things, you can't really focus on performing well on the task at hand. Well, there's a feedback loop involved there because as you worry about these things and you have problems with the task, that's going to activate more negative thoughts and more worries and more concerns about failure. Stereotype threat can also affect one's self-concept, and this is where things get kind of scary. Chronic stereotype threat can lead students to disidentify with intelligence and with school. Here's what I mean by that. When students disidentify with intelligence, essentially they no longer see intelligence as an important part of their self-esteem or their personal identity. That's obviously not good for anybody, particularly for someone who's a student. It essentially forces them to tune out. They don't work as hard. They perform worse. It's more likely to happen when the target person really stands out. Like if it's, for example, um, one of the few girls in a large group of men, or maybe the only black student in a classroom of white students, then it's more likely that this is going to happen. It's also more likely to happen if the target person is frequently victimized by the group because of the person's sex, for example, or because of the person's race, for example. So can we reduce stereotype threat? Yes, we can. And in fact, I'm going to give you more information about that in a later video. So that's it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon. <laughs>